Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, this amendment would require parental consent before a child can meet with the chaplain on campus. This session has been all about parental rights, so this would just ensure that parents are protected in this process, and before they meet with a school chaplain, they would have to receive that parental consent. Ms. Hinojosa, for purpose. Will the gentleman yield for questions? The gentleman yield for questions. Yes, I yield. Yields. Thank you. Appreciate your amendment about parental consent. We know, especially when it comes to religion, we should defer to parents um, for, um, for that permission when it comes to having that kind of access to our kids. Is that the aim of your amendment? Yes, that's what I believe. I think that's what most members of the body believe. One of the th another part to your amendment that I really appreciate it is the standards for conduct for a chaplain. Um, we want to ensure that all faiths are are appreciated and welcomed by this chaplain who stands in a position of authority in our schools and that that chaplain refrain quote refrains from proselytizing or imposing the chaplain's values or beliefs or religion on a student that's what your amendment says isn't that correct that's right this this amendment does not gut this bill this amendment does not undermine this bill all we're trying to do is add some belts and suspenders to this bill and make sure there are appropriate guardrails to protect our students. Like with many things, we require parental consent before a child can participate in a program or meet with a, a certain adult on campus. We're just applying those same guardrails to this legislation. I appreciate those guardrails, especially because one of the groups that came before our committee that was pushing for this bill was a group that has as its stated purpose to enhance quote, his presence by infiltrating the system and supporting Christians functioning and operating inside the school system, which I believe to be unconstitutional and not appreciated as a parent that our schools would be um, indoctrinating our kids on any kind of religion. And, and so I appreciate that. The second part that I have seen of this organization that's pushing this bill, it says from their profile, on their website. The strategy is simple. Leverage one of the largest networks on the earth, the existing school system, and utilize government funding along with your donation to teach Jesus in the classroom. That's unconstitutional, isn't it, Representative Tallarico? I believe it is, and I think we should all be concerned with any organization whose stated purpose is to infiltrate our public schools. Like many of you, I believe education should be about just that, education and not indoctrination. And I move adoption. The chair recognizes Mr. Hefner in opposition to the amendment. Mr. Speaker, members, uh, I think we can trust our school districts to make the decisions on the regulations that they'll put on um, our chaplains. Um, we currently um, don't do these kind of regulations on our school counselors. And this has in here for the Mr. Department Speaker. of Education to establish regulations, and I want to leave it with the school districts. Mr. Tallarico, for what purpose? Does the gentleman yield for the some questions? The gentleman yield for questions. Sure. The gentleman yields. Representative Hefner, I, one, I want to thank you. You and I have engaged in good faith, thoughtful conversations about this legislation. Um, consider you a friend and, and thankful that you've engaged with me on those conversations. I know we agreed on the First Amendment that we added. Uh, the Second Amendment you're opposing, and I just want to try to understand why you're opposing it and have that conversation in front of the body. Uh, are you aware of the National School Chaplains Association? I've heard of them. They uh, testified in favor of the bill both in the House and in the Senate. Have they helped you at all with this bill? Uh, we had uh, several different people uh, supply input that we talked to. I don't remember those, those specifically. Are you aware that the stated purpose of this organization is, quote, to enhance his presence by infiltrating the system and supporting Christians functioning and operating inside the school systems? I'm not advised. What I'm aware of is that this, what this bill does is allow uh, school districts to determine whether or not they want to allow chaplains as hired or volunteer personnel. And I appreciate that that's your purpose. I'm worried about the organizations that may try to take advantage of this, including any organization that's attempting to, quote, infiltrate our public schools. 
the that's, that's why this bill is permissive and would allow the school boards to establish their own rules. And that's why a few moments ago we added another amendment that was acceptable, acceptable to you, which would define what a chaplain is to be in alignment with the Department of Defense standards. Is that correct? Correct. And thank you for accepting that amendment. Uh, Representative Hefner, do you think we should encourage the infiltration of our public schools? I think we need to give our school districts every tool that we can in the toolbox with all that we've been experiencing with uh, mental health issues and catastrophes and crises. Um, our, our, our schools need to have every tool available to them, and this is just another tool. I want to ask about the amendment that's before us, which requires parental consent before a student can meet with a chaplain. I know, Representative Hefner, that you are a champion for parental rights, so I'm just curious why requiring parental consent before a student can meet with a chaplain is not acceptable to you in this legislation? Well, we, we currently do not require parental consent for them to meet with school counselors. And again, school districts will be free to establish any kind of rules and regulations regarding uh, how the chaplains would conduct themselves. Do you and believe I think a chaplain has the same qualifications as a school counselor? I don't know that they would be performing all of the duties that a school counselor does, but I do believe they're quite qualified to help with um, life issues and challenges that may be facing our students and teachers. And so I think they'd be more than qualified to fill these roles. So to be a school counselor in Texas, you have to have a master's degree. Are we requiring that school chaplains have a master's degree in this bill? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. Um, school counselors have to teach in Texas public schools for two years in a classroom before they can be a school counselor. Are we requiring the chaplains teach in a classroom for two years before becoming it, a school in, chaplain? In the definition of the, counts, of the chaplains that we had before, uh, chaplains go through extensive training uh, through all kinds of issues that they deal with. And um, again, like I say, this is permissive. Schools can require what they see fit. So, Representative Hefner, I agree that some chaplains go through extensive training. As you know, I'm a a student currently at Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary where I'm studying <laughs> alongside students who are going to become chaplains in our hospitals and our prisons and our armed forces. They are getting a master's degree in divinity and going through extensive courses in counseling and training for counseling. But I want to clarify that not all chaplains have to go through that type of rigorous training. In fact, I'm looking uh, at the website of the organization I mentioned earlier, National School Chaplains Association, they admit on their website that the training is, quote, minimal. It includes a 48-hour program that's equivalent to one college credit. That doesn't sound extensive to me. Does it sound extensive to you, Representative Hefner? Well, a school could, could very well require their chaplain to become a uh, board-certified chaplain. And some of the requirements there are essential requirements for certification include endorsement from your faith tradition, a master's degree from accredited theological school, at least four units of CPE, post-training, clinical pastoral experience, preparation of clinical materials, and face-to-face -face appearance before a certification committee. So there again, I want to I want to I want to make sure that we're making it clear that everybody knows that the schools may choose to do this or not and that they can put whatever rules and regulations in place that they see fit. So why don't we add to your legislation that chaplains have to meet those high standards before dealing with our students or serving our students in Texas public because, schools? Because I think, to, just to be blunt with you, I think we can trust the school boards to do that, to do that right there. Uh, Representative Hefner, part of the amendment that you're opposing would require school chaplains to undergo a background check. Can you repeat that, Representative Tallarico? Members, please take your conversation outside the rail. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Hefner, the amendment that you're opposing, my amendment, would require chaplains to undergo a background check, which is required for most of the adults who work in our public school system. Is there a reason that you're opposing that part of the amendment? Again, I trust my school boards to make those decisions. Your amendment also requires that the uh, Education Commissioner and the TEA establish rules of conduct, and I'd rather see that happen at the local level. So you don't want to require in your bill that chaplains have to undergo a background check? I want to leave it to the schools to make those decisions, the school boards. And just to make sure I'm clear, because we've talked a lot about parental rights, you don't want to mandate that schools have to receive parental consent before... Representative Tallarico, I have full faith 
and trust in our school boards to put regulations in place that would keep our kids uh, from being exposed to dangerous people. I appreciate that, Representative Hefner. I think my primary concern is that by not putting these guardrails in this piece of legislation that we're going to add our name to, that will allow organizations like the National School Chaplains Association, whose stated purpose is to infiltrate our system, to take advantage of your legislation and infiltrate our public schools. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.